Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. This is Monica Hernandez, Director of Innovation and Partnerships at SACOG. We are excited to support Local Motors and LaunchForth on their Ollie Fleet Challenge for the Sacramento region. First, a few housekeeping notes. This webinar is being recorded and will be available on the SACOG website later today. All participants will be muted throughout the webinar. Questions can be submitted through the chat function and will be addressed during the Q&A portion of this webinar. Please feel free to send your questions throughout the webinar. I'm going to turn it over very quickly to SACOG's Executive Director, James Corliss. Okay, thanks, Monica, and thanks to everybody who's joining us this afternoon. Um, I am really excited about this opportunity. I've been now uh, here in the Sacramento region for 18 months, and it just hit me right away uh, with all the sort of the technology bubbling out of Silicon Valley, how we are the perfect test bed. We're, we're a region that is ripe to test these kinds of opportunities like, uh, like autonomous shuttles, frankly. Um, and, and then when this came, uh, this opportunity came uh, to us just pretty recently with Local Motors and LaunchForth, uh, we really just sort of wanted to jump on this and really make sure, and that's what I want to, I'm, I'm glad we've got so many people on the call today, that we have a regional approach, we have regional applications, we're looking at every jurisdiction in our, in our six county area for, for opportunities to test these things. So, so um, this is uh, a great chance again to hear from both local motors and launch forth to ask your questions, to really understand uh, what a good pilot project would be, um, how to get around some of the constraints that we know we have with California. We know we've got a lot of work to do with the DMV to make uh, to make this um, make it easier to test uh, autonomous vehicles in California. Um, I also just want to share, um, you'll probably hear today uh, in terms of the pilot, there is a local match required, but there's some really exciting ongoing conversations around whether we can develop some sort of a regional fund to perhaps help cities and counties with a local match requirement. So again, we are nonprofit partners or for-profit partners. We're here to help. We're here to help you put together strong applications. We're real excited that Sacramento is one of the regions that's being looked at for this, uh, this deployment and this test. Uh, I can't think of a better place other than uh, where else in the front yard of the state capital of the most innovative state in the country to test uh, this kind of shuttle. So without further ado, Monica, I'll turn it back to you. Uh, we're excited to hear from Local Motors and LaunchForth, and I'm really hoping that we get a lot of great applications coming from our member agencies across the region. Monica. Great. Thanks, James. Uh, and next, we're excited to have from Local Motor Motors, Vice President of Global Sales and Business Development, Mitch Meneker. Mitch, we're going to turn it over to you. There might be about a two-second delay. Thank you, Monica. Oh. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Monica. Thank you, James, for uh, the introduction. And again, my name is Mitch Meneker. I'm Vice President of Global Sales and BizDev for Local Motors. I've been with the company almost four years. And I'm proud to say that I head up a, uh, a global team of reps from Australia all the way to Milan, Italy. Uh, Taylor Gigi, who you'll meet here shortly, uh, handles all of the North American continent west of the Mississippi. And uh, he will be the uh, point of contact as we launch in Sacramento uh, and anywhere else on the western part of the United States and Canada. And I'll be in a supporting role. So Locomotors, uh, we've been in business since 2007. Uh, we describe ourselves as a technology company that design, builds, and sells vehicles at a very rapid uh, innovation pace. Uh, we do that through the process of direct digital manufacturing, also known as 3D printing, which I'll explain, and also through our micro factory. Uh, and actually, I'm going to back up. You know, 3D printing is part of it, but we do it through co-creation. Uh, which is our launch force division and our micro factories, which is uh, our facilities that Ali is currently built in. Uh, Adam uh, is not on the line, but Adam is one of the leaders at launch forth. But uh, the best way to describe launch forth is as a, uh, a community of people of all walks of life. We have, I believe, last I checked, about 180,000 members across 125 countries. And there is no charge to become a member of LaunchForth's community. And LaunchForth is uh, based on solving problems that allows not only local motors, but other companies to go ahead and rapidly innovate product. 
Uh, the best thing I can give you an example, and then I'll shut up, is that um, you know the typical OEM company, uh, whether it's Tesla or, or General Motors, it takes five to seven years to go ahead and go from the back, uh, back of a napkin sketch to putting a vehicle on the road at a cost of about $1 billion uh, to go ahead and do that. Uh, we have developed and put into uh, prototype form. Uh, Ollie was from the time that it was conceived, to the time that we had our first prototype was approximately 75 days. Okay, so so we, we've done work for Airbus, we've done work for General Electric, we've done work for Domino's Pizza, we've done work for the Department of Defense, we've done work for uh, a multitude of Peterbilt, a multitude of companies that basically use our platform to solve problems that they cannot get solved quickly enough, and they tap into our resources of, of global community members uh, who get remunerated if they come up with an idea for a challenge that is selected. We pay uh, a fee, we pay royalties, uh, and uh, so that is for the incentive for all of the global community members to chime in on our challenge. So. I'll, I'll stop with that and I will let you uh, go ahead and move on. And I'm obviously available for questions as we get to the end. Thank you so much, Mitch. Very informative. Um, I just want to make a quick note that we are getting some error messages from some of our audience members. Um, I just do want to note that we are recording this and you will be able to view this uh, later today as well as uh, our presentation this afternoon or later by Taylor will be sent along in our follow up. So next, I'm going to turn it over to Adam El Magrabi. He is the Vice President of Co-Creation for LaunchForce. Adam? Good morning, everyone. Thank you um, for the invitation to SACOG to join you guys. It um, feels like it's been a while since I've been up to Sacramento, so it's great to be on the phone with you guys. Um, so I, I um, Mitch kind of gave a pretty awesome introduction of what uh, LaunchForce does, um, but in in a little bit more depth, LaunchForth has really been at the helm of creating expertise and innovation around co-creation and design strategy. And what I mean by that is understanding how do you leverage large groups of people with partners and clients to work together to create new solutions for the future of mobility, the future of work, the future of, of, of society and culture. So we've dabbled in consumer electronics, we've developed Ollie on our platform, and we currently working with the United States Marine Corps, working on a project with the Air Force, and we're also working with Local Motors on developing the Ali Fleet Challenge. We've been leveraging our platform and understanding new opportunities of how to engage with folks in the governance and what I like to call the mobility placemaking space to understand what's the future of cities and what's the future of mobility writ large that we can support and co-create with. Um, our role is oftentimes to be in the middle of things to create business development opportunities for our partners like Local Motors and to support us in discovering how to really leverage our advanced manufacturing function, which includes the digital, uh, the 3D, 3D printing that Mitch, Mitch mentioned. And we also do a lot of digital direct manufacturing, which is really understanding how do we take what once was analog processes of production and turn them into digital processes that can be repeated um, at scale um, and also iterated upon very quickly so we can fine tweak, fine, fine tune things. Um, and I think I'll leave it for there and I'll let you guys um, finish around the, around the introductions. Great, thank you, Adam. And next, I think what everybody is really tuning in for is Taylor's presentation on the keys to a successful application. So we have Taylor Gigi. He's the regional account manager for Local Motors. And it's going to be just a few seconds. We're going to turn the screen over to him. And again, please use the chat function to send in your questions. And uh, we will get those answered during our Q&A portion, as well as provide those to Taylor. And he will be able to give you follow up uh, directly. So with that, Taylor? Great, thank you, Monica. Can everyone hear me still? Yes. Good, good. All right, so I'm going to introduce you to our uh, product, Ollie, specifically. You know, thank you, Mitch and Adam, for giving a high-level intro to uh, our company, Local Motors, as well as uh, LaunchForth, which uh, we'll uh, go over a little bit later as well. So, 
to start, Ollie is our uh, current autonomous vehicle that we build and produce ourselves in-house. It was created in 2016, and it solves first mile and last mile mobility solutions. So being a low speed shuttle going less than 25 miles per hour, these shuttles are going to be perfect for campus type environments, downtown city centers, amusement parks, airports, those kind of environments that, you know, have areas that are a little too far to walk, but too short to have, you know, a traditional city bus route on them. So you can see that, the, you know, the bread and butter for this type of a product being a low speed level four autonomous vehicle lies in those campus type scenarios. So Ollie is going to rely on a fixed route and a geofence mapped area. So that means that there will be a digital map created that Ollie will be able to drive on a fixed route and be able to use its sen sensors to detect any deviations in the path. So Ollie currently relies on LIDAR, radar, and GPS to be able to perform intelligent driving maneuvers and functions. So this is a very safe and efficient way to move people at low speed. It's going to uh, house uh, between eight and 12 passengers. And uh, again, we'll drive at level four autonomy, which basically means that there is no steering wheel, no gas pedal, no brake, and it will be able to drive dynamically on that route. We currently have about 15,000 miles on our autonomous system that are com completely validated in complex traffic scenarios and are currently operating in four countries. So again, going back to the fleet challenge um, that we recently launched a couple of weeks ago, we uh, wanted to propose the question to you know, the greater Phoenix and greater Sacramento area, what would you do with a fleet of autonomous shuttles? So I kind of want to be able to ask that question to each one of you individually. What would you be able to do if we were able to give you between two and five of these autonomous low speed shuttles for a three month deployment. And we want you guys to come up with creative solutions to be able to answer that question right there. So the requirements that I really wanna discuss um, pertaining to the fleet challenge particularly and this free three month deployment that you would uh, potentially win. In terms of the route, simplicity is key. We're looking at those people that can most closely follow the requirements spelled out in the challenge in terms of the technical requirements, meaning no traffic lights. We're looking for you know, mainly fixed routes with stop signs, no roads with higher speeds of 35 miles per hour for safety and regulation purposes. And then these routes are typically gonna be in, on, a, on a loop basis. So anything you know, between a half a mile and a three mile loop you know, traveling at that low speed is going to be extremely efficient to transport those eight people to different areas. And we are also looking at uh, operating during the daytime only. In terms of regulatory requirements, on private roads, you know, we, we would be able to have full access, you know, uh, depending on your own approval. So let's say that, you know, someone on this call is an owner of uh, or an operator of a, a university campus. Those university campuses are typically operated and completely private from the city itself. And there would not be any regulatory requirements for autonomous operations on that campus uh, at low speed. Now, when we're talking with public use cases, you know, regular city owned roads, we would expect that in the application that you would provide, that you would provide the full city support, the approval, and kind of really the, the pathway to show permanent operations on that route. And whether that is, you know, simply a, the mayor's signature on a piece of paper, you know, allowing this as well as DMV support, you know, we're looking for, for you guys to help, uh, you know, be the leaders to deploy these autonomous vehicles along with us, Local Motors and Launch Force. Again, with the, the challenge, a couple of specifics. Um, we are currently accepting applications up until November 5th there will be a two week validation period following that challenge close date, followed by several weeks of judging. We currently have several high profile judges in the Sacramento and Phoenix area that have agreed to uh, participate in uh, the validation and judging process to decide which, uh, get to give each uh, entry a score to, to be able to decide which one would be the winner. One winner will be announced on December 14th with deployment ideally 
beginning in, around January or February of this year. Now, I don't know if everyone was, uh, was uh, watching Fox 40 uh, Sacramento News this morning, but our CEO, Jay Rogers, actually did a live TV segment on this and invited, you know, the rest of the, the greater Sacramento area to apply. So we're really excited, you know, that we're able to get, you know, the, the exposure and be able to show people what, these, what this vehicle can do and how it can benefit each and every one of you on your campus, city environment, or private area. Now, Monica really asked me to focus on what are the keys to a winning application, and I want to be very clear about this as well. We want everyone to be able to follow the requirements as closely as possible. After this webinar, you will be able to download the challenge guidebook that spells out what we are looking for and exact requirements in addition to what I spelled out earlier. And the person that is able to more closely follow those requirements would be deemed you know, a higher, highly uh, competitive in the application process. We are looking for a portion of variable cost contribution as this is you know, a, a very expensive project in, on local motors uh, dollar that we are, you know, for lack of a better term, putting a lot of skin in the game uh, for you guys. You know, we are providing these shuttles 100% free of charge and we're asking for in, in return as part of the application to share, you know, what kind of budgets you guys would have available to support, you know, both the marketing, insurance, operations of these vehicles, which Local Motors is 100% prepared to assist with. And then lastly, you know, full regulatory support. We're really looking for those people that are able to, you know, be leaders since this is really new technology and, you know, they're not fully approved on public roads. And so, so we're looking for people that can help guide that pathway to get these fully approved both on you know private campus scenarios and public roads so as far as next steps i will definitely send this this uh um, presentation out to everyone on this call afterwards but i have the link listed right here i would have everyone go to this link designate a point of contact from your organization city or company um, to create a profile on the launch forth online platform you would then fill out a brief form to request more information and the official application, after which I would then approve it and you would be able to go and download all of the files that are available, including the challenge guidebook that spells out all of the requirements, a sample route map of previous operations we have done at Local Motors, as well as the brochure on the vehicle, including technical specifications to continue the application process. So with that being said, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to uh, Monica to open the floor, I assume, to any questions. Um, thank you. Thank you, Taylor. Uh, very informative. And um, we actually still have uh, Adam and Mitch on the line as well for um, questions and answers. I think um, there's obviously a lot of information to digest, but wanted to take this opportunity for questions. Uh, looks like we have some ideas, uh, but not specific questions yet coming through. So if you have an idea for a project, as Taylor said, um, you want to make sure you register as a potential applicant or as an applicant, we're going to send that information over and uh, to all of you. And then uh, we will uh, make sure you're connected with that. We get some, we have some questions coming in. Can you explain the cost share you mentioned regarding insurance? So Taylor, I think this is a question for you. The cost share uh, that is required for um, the winning applicant to pay, can you just describe that a little bit more, what it's used for? Yeah, yeah, so uh, to be clear on, on the cost sharing, the, var the variable cost that we're looking to uh, um, assist in with each applicant, um, Local Motors is providing the vehicle um, operations and the vehicle itself 100% free. We are looking to receive in turn that cost sharing that is a, uh, assisting us in the setup of the challenge, of the setup of the uh, deployment area and route. So each route is gonna be individualistic to you know each application obviously. And depending on what the route and application looks like, you know we're looking to receive some additional funds uh, to help support that. And so, um, right now, a competitive application would probably be able to contribute a, between 100 and 125,000. 
um, for this deployment and this challenge purpose. Um, I believe the minimum that they were looking for in the requirements spelled out in the challenge is about $88,000. Um, so those who are more closely able to meet that number and even exceed that number will be deemed you know, more competitive to support their challenge. So we're looking for people that you know, we're giving the vehicles free, we're supporting this challenge 100%, but we're also looking for people in return to be able to say that they're very committed to future operations of autonomous vehicles and being very clear as to why we are launching this challenge. You know, we're, we're continuing to validate this vehicle in terms of consumer feedback and technical feedback, but as well, you know, we're preparing for our commercial release fully certified vehicle in early 2020. This challenge has helped to prepare us to uh, show the, the greater public what this vehicle can do and to ideally log pre-orders for that commercial vehicle in 2020. I hope that that answers. Uh, oh, sorry, I wanted to, to brush over the uh, insurance question. Um, Local Motors is supporting the insurance of each application in terms of the vehicle liability, manufacturer liability, and then warranty of the vehicle. Nothing is required on the applicant's part in terms of insurance or paying for additional insurance but we would suggest as a part of this application pr process that each and every one of you would review what your own insurance looks like and see if you feel comfortable in addition to our own insurance um, continuing on with that process. Great, thanks. We were also asked for um, the URL and we've actually put the website up on the screen so um, all of our viewers should be able to see the um, challenge information and register as an applicant so that you can stay up to date on information and get um, a, in direct communication with Taylor. Another question for you, Taylor, can you please describe the vehicle capabilities? So go through again the passenger capacity, the range, the per range per charge, charge time, and then also can you describe some of the factors that um, impact the range and the charge life. Most definitely, thank you. Um, so Ollie is a 100% electric vehicle. It relies on a battery pack and being a low speed vehicle, you know, we're able to have a, a slightly smaller battery pack than, you know, a larger, um, I, I guess we could compare it to a Tesla that would get, you know, 400 plus miles of range. Ollie will get between 30 and 40 miles of range so if operated on that half mile to three mile loop, you know, it would be able to operate several hours at a time. In terms of charging, um, we are able to adapt a standard 120 volt uh, wall outlet, but that would take a, a, a while longer to charge. We do have the super charger available that charges the full battery in about 90 minutes. And uh, speaking a little more technically, that would just require an adapt adaptation to three phase power with 440 volts minimum at 32 amps. And this, again, this is all spelled out in the challenge. Um, once you download the guidebook, each and every one of these responses will be found there. Great, thank you. Um, so uh, one of the participants is asking about the potential deplo deployment. Uh, we're talking about a deployment in January or February, and you indicated only daytime hours of operation um, when there's limited daytime in January and February. Could there be consideration um, regarding a limited amount of operation when daylight has uh, ended? So any type of dusk or nighttime operation? Yes, so the reason we wanted to focus and limit it to daylight operations is we are actually going to have a full-time onboard safety steward on the vehicle that has full manual control and emergency stop modes of the vehicle at all times. This vehicle will travel at level four autonomy during the operation, but again, that, op that operator is there just for emergencies and consumer uh, comfort. Um, in terms of the daylight operation, you know, the, the reason for that is so that operator can, you know, visibly see, you know, any, uh, anything, um, you know, during the daylight, obviously. If, if an applicant was looking to suggest nighttime operations or dusk operations, we would just ask that the submission show support for, um, you know, well-lit uh, roadways as if it were daytime operations. So we're not looking to operate you know, where there is not very much light. We would like it to be fully lit so that the safety operator can feel comfortable as well. 
great. Thank you. Um, this is a difficult, challenging question coming up. If the vehicle strikes and um, is involved in a human fatality or seriously injures a person, who is liable? That's, yeah, that's, that's a very important question. Um, I'll go ahead and have Mitch take that one. Okay, we're gonna turn over the audio to Mitch. Mitch, you're ready to go. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think there, there's a probably a legal scenario to that, and there's probably a practical scenario to that, and you know, um, I'll give you both. Uh, le legally, the manufacturer would be liable for any defects of, of the uh, manufacturing of its vehicle, but the practical reality is that, God forbid, somebody gets injured or hurt, everybody's going to get sued. Uh, it's just the nature of the world today. But you know, the legality of it, we, we are all taking responsibility uh, for our own vehicles. But uh, you know, like I said, if something got to happen, uh, as Kelly pointed out, this is why whoever uh, is the applicant for the challenge, you, you want to go ahead and you know, add Ollie, if you will, for the time that it's deployed uh, as a, you know, we, we would most likely, I'm not the insurance person on this, but we would be adding, the, let's say it's the city of Sacramento, we'd be adding you as an additional loss payee on our policy, vice versa. And uh, in most cases, uh, you know, I mean, we have, we use Allianz as our global insurer. Uh, they're kind of uh, AIG based out of Paris, uh, but it, it would be, you know, advisory to go ahead and have each and every applicant uh, check in with their insurance people and certainly add liability to their policy if they don't have it. Uh, and we would be naming you as an additional loss payee in our policy. Great, thank you. Okay, next question. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the California Department of Motor Vehicle restrictions, specifically things like um, autonomous vehicles not being currently allowed on public streets and roads? Um, it's a pretty important piece of the puzzle. So could you talk about that? Please. Uh, yes. You want you want to take it, Taylor? Or you want me to take it? Go for it, Mitch. Thanks. Okay. No problem. Yeah. There are there are two uh, facets to deploying an autonomous vehicle on a road. One of them is the at the federal level with NHTSA. Uh, the other one is at the state level, which of course in this case would be with the state of California. Um, I believe that California does allow uh, autonomous vehicles on a road. I believe there's a permit process that has to be done. The bigger problem that comes in is at the NHTSA at the federal level. And this is why we're looking to deploy as much as we possibly can on private campuses. What, what NHTSA says is that in order to put a vehicle, it doesn't have to be autonomous, any vehicle on the road, uh, in a public road, I should say, it has to go through FMVSS crash testing. Okay, none of us who are dealing in this low-speed shuttle space have currently an FMVSS crash-tested vehicle. NHTSA says you can apply for an exemption, uh, but there's no guarantee of that. And I won't go into the details of what needs to be included for an exemption. We have applied for an exemption, and the problem with with all of our shuttles is that we are too heavy to be considered a low-speed electric vehicle, kind of like a golf cart, and we're too light to be considered a bus. So all of us dealing in this space are kind of in, uh, I won't say no man's land, but we're, we're waiting for the legislation to catch up with the technology. Uh, NHTSA, is, I have heard, is supposed to be potentially lifting their requirements as early as this week. Uh, we're not anticipating anything until next year. So, you know, in theory, even though the state of California or Arizona or Florida might allow for autonomous vehicles to be on the roads if they deploy on a public highway or a you know, public road, uh, if you pick the 405 or the 5, you know, they have to be federally uh, crash tested. And if not, obviously you run the risk of God that something happens and you didn't have a vehicle that complied with the feds. So that, that is, it's, it's really not so much at the state. The bigger problem for us is at the federal but as, as, as uh, Taylor has pointed out, if we deal primarily with private campuses, uh, we are, we're, we're golden at that point in time. We don't, we don't have to worry about the NHTSA. It's only on a public road. Thank you, Mitch. 
uh, this may be either for, for Mitch or Taylor or Adam. Uh, you anticipate having a DMP testing permit prior to the launch, meaning will, will uh, local motors go uh, pursue that permit? So, the, yeah, this is Taylor. Um, in terms of the actual California DMV permit, you know, if that, if the operations or the applicant suggests uh, operations on a public road, that would definitely be a need. Um, and we would look to the applicant to assist in the support of receiving that permit as kind of a temporary permit for that operation, as opposed to a permanent state DMV permit. Right. Thank you. And then I have kind of a two-part route question. So you had mentioned that um, you did not want, you wanted to avoid um, lit intersections. Would Ollie actually be able to go through a lit intersection? Is that, or is that something that completely takes you out of the running? And also related to the route, how far can the charging station be from the route? Okay, so in terms of the charging station, since that's a little bit easier and quicker of a question, we would hope that the charging station would be, you know, within no more than a quarter mile from the route itself, um, so that it would be able to go from autonomous mode over to manual mode back to the, uh, the charging station itself. The charging station would ideally be a, a locked, uh, you know, climate controlled garage that Ollie would be able to stay overnight. And then, Great. sorry, can you say the first question again? Sure. Uh, um, the the lit intersection concern is that um, something that would preclude a route or a, a challenge that you would consider working yeah. with the stakeholders through. So we are currently looking to uh, continue our, uh, to test uh, DSRC um, hookups and uh, traffic light integration with our Ollie vehicle, but as a part of this this challenge, you know, receiving the vehicle for free. We're looking to replicate this, you know, on the local motor side, you know, as, as cheap as possible. Um, so that's why we are looking to keep the routes as close to those requirements and as simple as possible, because um, every complexity added to that simple route um, takes our engineers, uh, you know, even more time to be able to uh, map that area and change it as opposed to that simple uh, standard route. And so we do have that capability for the vehicle to continue through light. Uh, but as far as this application goes, we're suggesting that your routes do not include that as they will not be deemed the most competitive in the challenge. The, right. That is, uh, it, it, to, uh, to be on the contrary of that, um, we would invite you, you know, if your ideal route must include a traffic light integration, we would still fully invite you to participate in the challenge and accept and uh, participate in the, the submission because we're going to be reviewing those submissions. Although that one would may not receive the first place vehicle, we would hopefully be able to operate on that environment, you know, after the first place winner. Great, thank you. Also regarding um, the route and secured uh, storage, does the secured storage have to be a covered garage or is a secured parking lot sufficient for the vehicle storage? So the vehicle itself in um, when it is not in operation needs to be lockable. Um, uh, it does not actually need to be fully enclosed climate controlled. That, that is what we would suggest because it would just be best for the vehicle. But in terms of this submission and application, we would just need an area, you know, um, I've seen applicants propose uh, the lower floor of a parking garage and they put up a temporary chain link fence around a certain space that has EV charging solution. Something similar to that that would provide a lockable solution for safety uh, for Ollie. Great, thank you. So uh, back to the local applicant match requirements. Would uh, you consider contributions in the form of marketing, operations, and or maintenance uh, in lieu of the uh, cash? 
so we would gladly welcome any in-kind contributions, but as when, when speaking competitively with this application process, we are specifically talking about monetary funds um, with a minimum of 88,000 with competitive monetary funds being contributed in the 100 to 125,000 range. Okay, thank you. Um, that is all of the questions we have so far. I'm gonna give a few more minutes in case anybody has been spurred, but wanna remind everybody so that you can connect directly with Taylor, please go to the website that is on your screen and have whoever would be the lead applicant sign up as a user and register. Stay Calls will be posting this webinar on our website later today. We will also follow up with an email to all participants with our presenters' contact information. And um, I'm actually gonna turn it over to Taylor, Mitch, and Adam. If there are any last uh, closing remarks, we'll start with Taylor. Yeah, thank you. It was, it was a pleasure to be able to uh, uh, give you this overview on our challenge. We are extremely excited with our partnership with the city of Sacramento and the, the, the greater Sacramento region to be able to launch, you know, the first of many uh, autonomous vehicles in the area. Our purpose is to validate these vehicles so that you know, in the coming years, we would be able to have hundreds of these operating efficiently, you know, supporting uh, the, the citizens and, and your unique users. Um, for those who want to kind of get a head start and jump straight into the application right now before you receive you know, the official email, uh, you can just go to localmotors.com and on the upper right hand of the side of the page, there will be a link for the Ollie Fleet Challenge, and you can continue from there. But it has been a pleasure, and I'll go ahead and turn it over to uh, Mitch and then Adam. Thank you, Taylor. And uh, again, our thanks to Monica and your, your team for arranging this. Uh, just one final comment going back, one question with regard to going through the stoplights. Uh, Taylor pointed out accurately that you know, we encourage you all to submit what you feel is your ideal routes. And even if it is not selected as a winner, there will potentially be other deployments behind this one. But I also wanted to mention, again, would not be an ideal, and it may not be a winning solution, but with an onboard steward, we would have the ability to take the vehicle out of autonomous mode and manually drive with a joystick, drive the vehicle through intersections as a last alternative. But you know, again, we're gonna evaluate these on a case-by-case -case basis. Those that don't require large lifts but have great uh, routes proposed will, will take priority. But again, I'm repeating myself. Please, please submit what you feel is a great challenge, a uh, great opportunity. We'll vet it, we'll look at it. And even if you're not the winners, we're looking to keep these vehicles in Sacramento after the winner's uh, deployment. And you know, it might be a situation that we would look at after the fact. But, other than that, uh, my email is here, and uh, our team is ready, willing, and able to answer any and all questions, and we're thrilled and honored to work with you and the, and the rest of the city of Sacramento. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, and we'll turn it over to Adam. So Adam, you have muted yourself, so why don't you go ahead and unmute yourself? Okay, we may have lost Adam at this point, but um, I do wanna close and remind everybody that um, there are some preliminary conversations happening with um, stakeholders across the region about a potential regional fund to help offset some of those local jurisdiction match costs. Um, it's still very early. Oh, we have Adam back. So I'm gonna turn it back over to him. Go ahead, Adam. Oh, nope, okay. We keep losing Adam, he's in and out, okay. So, wrapping up again, early conversations to potentially offset some of that local match cost. Uh, we will update this group and work with um, any applicants from across the region, all six counties, 22 cities, uh, public and private stakeholders. Additionally, uh, for some of our jurisdictions who may not have uh, in-house GIS staff, uh, SACOG has some limited capacity to support your um, mapping requirements. 
for your applications, as well as the staff here of um, Adrian Moretz and Rafe Porter and myself, um, we are able to assist with um, technical assistance on your actual application. So if you um, want us to review or assist, please reach out to us. Um, you'll have all of our contact information in your follow-up. And with that, we are going to come to a close. Thank you everybody for your time and let's go Sacramento region.